Welcome everybody to the Tower Tag Tournament hosted by VR Master League in conjunction with the Virtual Athletics League. Today we are going to be bringing you some high octane arcade based action with Spectrum VR versus XS VR. And uh, I'm looking forward to how this matchup is going to shake out. When you get into these higher tier matchups, it's super exciting to watch what kind of strategies come out, how the teamwork comes together. And in 3v3, you get a lot of opportunities for teamwork. So I'm pretty excited to see just how this series shakes up. I'm going to go ahead and let both teams know we are ready for this round one to begin. And we should be hopping into the action shortly. Give me a quick moment. Both squads have been notified. The round is going to fire up. The objective is going to be goal tower. What this means is both teams are attempting to capture the enemy's objective. You can see there on your screen, the goal tower is labeled with big, large beams of light sticking out from them. And I just don't know how this series is going to shake out. Spectrum VR versus extra excess spectrum on the fire side, excess on the ice. We are underway right away. You can see XSVR1 is going to be the probably standard goalie position. And already a bit of an exchange and fire f uh, losing one of their own. A bit of a battle in the set center. Also switching around to Kensai on the north. Struggling with VI Nerd in a duel and a trade. Important thing to remember is that once you go into this death state, you have to respawn. And it takes some time for you to respawn. Uh... I, can't, I don't know what the actual full timer is. I want to say it's about five to eight seconds, though. So on kill, you have to react and utilize that downtime that you know the enemy has. But look at this. VR nerd trying to cap. He snuck in. Wow. Almost able to secure himself with an early point onto his team. It, uh, it gets denied. And look at this quick response from uh, the fire side. They're regaining the land that they've lost. And now a bit of an exchange in fire. Between Brandominos and VR Nerd up on the north again. VR Nerd's trying to secure this point here. If he does, he's going to do another flank. He's going to try and come around onto the objective again. But a nice pickup from Brandominos does allow him to push forward. In the meantime, we have a bit of a trade going on in the center. And look at this. This is a full push from Team Fire. They got two here on objective. Shots coming in to support Fisherman as he tries to capture. But he goes down and then instantly after, picked up by Brando. Ooh, this is a full team press. Kensai able to assist as well, and that puts Steam Spectrum on the board. They go up 1-0. And now the board is cleared again. They have to recapture the nodes to move, and then advance forward into a position where they can capture the enemy's objective. So that is the name of the game, is it's land control and then objective control. And so what we saw there was... Uh, Spectrum VR maintaining, uh, gaining a lot of land control so that they could flank from the north and the south. Then they've invested all three on that objective cap, and that's something that requires coordination. And that's the teamwork that I love to see come in here. Like right now, they're they're posturing for another push. They've just captured the south the south lane here. As you can see, all these points belonging to the fire squad. That means they can easily push up and flank here if they so desire, but they may not need to as the cap does get uh, brought in. And this is not going to be able to be denied. Randominos does get picked up just in time. That couldn't have been any closer for that ice squad. And they just need to get better land control. You can see that's something that they are aware of, that they are lacking on their overall map control. XSVR is trying to remedy this, but Spectrum does a great job of tucking in and staying alive. That's a good team cap there. A uh, reminder that if you do put uh, two, two, two onto a point and try and cap, it increases the speed. And here we have a team cap coming in. And they can't deal with both in time at all. And an incredibly quick point number two coming in from Spectrum VR. I think the one difference that we're really seeing here is Spectrum is super strong in their team coordination. They're able to send several up to points. And, and even when they come and try and apply pressure and push forward, the teamwork comes into play there. A nice double team 
onto that south flanker. And now Brandon just securing land, making sure that his team has that land advantage. XSVR needs to re uh, regain some of this. And as soon as it comes in, the enemy fire team is there trying to deny it. Kensai almost playing the defensive role here as he denies XSVR some shots. And meanwhile, on the north side, that's been mostly ice dominant. Although they have been, again, doing a good job of maintaining land control. Now here comes the double push again. If they don't prevent this fire squad from pushing forward up through the center, there's going to be another split push and actually a little flank coming around on the north side. This may catch off the entire ice squad. Oh, good plays from the ice defense there. I think that was... Uh, XSVR, who managed to find that pick. He had quickly identified where the cap was coming from, and now we have fights in the middle. There's your overall scoreline, as you can see. 320 left on the clock. This is not looking good. Look at your look at your mini map in the bottom left here. The overall land control is dominated by Spectrum. I this is something that happens with teams that can't. Uh, I don't know if it's battle back, but just aren't able to seize land quick enough. Is is that you can really snowball? And that's what Spectrum VR are doing right now. They're snowballing or trying to at the very least uh, in these rounds. They're trying to gain super dominant land control. Look at this. On the backside, we have a bit of a flank coming in. Looks like from Brando as he does get into position to cap. Is anybody here to defend? Is shut down just... Oh, actually not in the nick of time. Spectrum able to get on the board again. That's three to zero. And now again, the minimap resetting. Look at this. This is going to be another excess push. Or sorry, Spectrum push. Excuse me. Look at your minimap again. The land dominated by Spectrum. And here comes Fishman trying to cap. And he's going to get assistance from his team on the other side. And an easy fourth point. Spectrum absolutely dominating in this map number one. And again, the land control just not coming in. Obviously, the pick's not going necessarily into the favor of XS. XS VR doing very well to hold his own. And here comes another Spectrum push. They've got two here to support. A third coming in to get the double cap. And the defenders up high cannot prevent... The point from getting secured, Spectrum are just absolutely working over this XSVR squad right now. I'm not sure what the answer is. I really just think it's a matter of finding the picks. That's a huge one for VR Nerd right there. This may actually allow them to get a little bit on the offensive if they decide to push forward. But look at that. VR Nerd not capitalizing off the land secured. And now they're losing land again. VR Nerd and XSVR are trying to push up. But in the meanwhile, the push coming in on the backside towards the objective. Towards the ice objective. Here it is. This is not going to be good. This is undefended. Everybody on ice trying to push in and get that cap. They spent their whole team. They invested everybody there in the just-in-time shots. Are able to deny that. Now, Spectrum, or sorry, XS is back on the back foot. They need to readjust, focus on maintaining this land control, but they do not have. And yikes, Spectrum positioned again with two here on the tower. And the timer ends with Spectrum up 5-0 to zero. overall KD. Not a really blowout KD difference, but you can definitely see a higher bit of kills over on the Spectrum VR side of things.
but wow, what a great coordinated run from Spectrum VR there. They uh, they are the team to watch for sure in this series. If they can keep this sort of teamwork up. Oh boy, this is going to be a tough one for XS. I'm not sure what the plan of approach is, to be honest. I just think... I'm not sure. Let's let both teams know we are ready for round two. Maybe we'll see a shift in strategy from XS. Both squads ready for the action for round two, and we're going to see just exactly how XS adjusts for this second round as we get it underway. Brief reminder, if you are just tuning in, the name of the game is Goal Tower. Each team is trying to capture the enemy's goal tower, and the way you move in this map is by securing points of land. You're securing these nodes that are spread throughout the map. So you do see right when the round starts... Uh, a very much uh, a, co a competition for the land grab uh, is underway, and I think Spectrum are just more efficient at getting these early land points. And you can see they prioritize securing the middle and ma uh, maintaining uh, land grabs there, and then also eventually they send the two on the north and south. And it's just ice getting picked apart here as they get uh, one and two go down. Puts him back at the base for spawn, allows Spectrum to grab more land, and already the pressure being applied here onto the Spectrum squad. <laughs> Almost capped, all that progress gets reset, and now Kensai is going to take up the position. Actually, a pretty solid defense there from Ice, managing to prevent Spectrum from pushing forward. But how are they going to react? Because the push is coming right back at them. They only get a little bit of land before Spectrum is right knocking at their door yet again. And this time, they're splitting it. They got two, but they put one on the objective. That's a little bit of a new change of pace, and it seems to be working pretty well to deny that double cap at the very least. Kensai nearly getting flanked. XSVR completely missing Kensai in the middle. And it's almost like they're unaware of that middle node. The node that Kensai hold is super important. And what you can actually see him doing is literally just holding the land from the middle so that his team can push forward. He's not advancing out of the center position there. He finally does push forward and he's going to go for a cap while both his squads here. A quick spectrum point puts them up 1-0 for round number two. Go on board the top fragger. For this team, Kensai. That's his strategy. It does look like he's going to try and rotate around. Far left side. He has secured himself with a good chunk of land. Down goes one. Can he find himself a second? Looks like he might be able to. He does. In the meantime, his team's capturing the objective as they secure themselves. Point number two. For Spectrum VR, the KD is definitely going into the favor of Kensai with that flank, and we're going to stay on board Kensai here for this second. Uh, well, it could be third point for Spectrum. Being a bit of a defensive strategy change here. By uh, taking a little bit of damage, he's pretty low on HP, and he does get picked off. In the meantime, what do we have over here in the center? cap but it is denied just in time by the ice squadron on board kensai again in the center finding picks on that uh, uh, ice push denying that from coming in i mean ice has not been able to even get out of their base xsvr has been on the back foot this entire time That is point number three. The dedication to getting into cover there. You can see Kensai almost going prone in his play space. In his play space. Behind the pillar that's in the middle of his of his area. 
important thing to remind it, remember that, in, that because this is in arcades, they have the ability to sort of make unique uh, setups for this game. So most players actually have a physical tower in the center of their play space that they use to brace off of and peek around. And you can really see in some of these cases, Kensai nicely utilizing this uh, middle tower as he ducks behind and utilizes it for cover when he caps in. Now he's pushing forward again for another cap opportunity. XSVR, however, finding shots. Yeah, he gets real low, picked off. On board XSVR, the top fragger for Ice. He has to readjust, he has to find this pick, but he can't get any land movement. Shots coming in from VR Nerd, able to deny the cap. Now Fishman getting assist from his team. Hensai there dueling on that tower cap and now four to zero. They are absolutely running over this XS squad with coordination and precise shots. Landing those kills is so important because it does add to your land control. If you get these picks right here, if like VR nerd goes down like this, that's five to eight seconds that he's respawning. He cannot be helping. He cannot defend the land grabs. He cannot be grabbing land. It's missed time that Spectrum are really good at capitalizing on. They recognize that once they get a pick that they can cap. And here comes Kensai. Looks like, or sorry, Brand Domino is trying to get the point, but he can't all by his lonesome. I mean, look at that. Look at that team fire there. They had, I think they had th all three players shooting at the same one there. And here comes the team push. There's going to be two on both sides as they do start the cap. It's going to be a quick one. 5-0 in no time. Spectrum, just keep tacking on. I believe that there is another matchup just after this. The winner from here will be facing off. To double check on who it is that they will be competing against. But... Oh, look at this! VR Nerd able to get behind the Ice Squad, tries to cap, and we're into a base race, and they do not get it in time! The teamwork on the fire objective ends up paying off, and they snag the point just before Ice can, adding on to their scoreline 6 to 0. Good teamwork coming in from this ice squad. They managed to push up. They can really secure some strong land grabs now with these respawns. Ooh, and this is good teamwork coming in from this squad right now. XSVR and VR Nerd really being a serious threat. And now for the first time, Spectrum on the back foot. XSVR is trying to cap, and he can get ice on the board. XS finally gets a point up there. But is it too little too late? I think now XS has roughly 50 seconds to get five points. That's a point every 10 seconds. I don't even think they can get to objective that fast. They certainly are trying. Quick pushes up to the center with the full squad. Nobody's sitting back on defense. And maybe that's what they have needed to have done this whole time. Comes the push from Fishman again, getting that central position. He's unshootable through that glass, and he's capturing the points surrounding it so that it's easy for him to, to move. Fishman is losing a little bit, and XSVR is adjusting accordingly. A nice job from him. But this is not looking good. Oh, a good set of kills from XS. Keep things alive, preventing another point. But it, again, too little, too late. Timer runs out. Spectrum end up going up six to one for map number two. And I think that is it. I don't believe we play out the third map. That will be the victors of this series.
yeah, pretty sure that is it for XS. We will be looking at going into our next. Figure out exactly. Buff City. Personality of this one, Spectrum VR, so. That should be a ideally a bit more a bit closer of a matchup. I I would expect Bluff City certainly put up a good uh competitive set. But Spectrum looking so good here with their coordination, moving as fast as they do, securing the points as quickly as they do. Just great teamwork that's getting them into better positions, better scores. I think we're gonna take a brief intermission while we set up the next set of rounds. Off City VR and Spectrum VR. So be sure to tune in for that. It should be starting in a roughly 20 minutes, if all things go according to plan. But we will keep the stream live here just in case things start a little earlier. Ready, jump in. Thank you so much for tuning in for this first match uh, of the Tower Tag uh, Virtual Athletic League's Tournament Semifinals. My name is Nightfire with two E's, and I will be your host for the that Don't go anywhere. More Tower Tag coming at you.
We are back to a new set of semifinal matches. This time at Spectrum VR, our returning champions against Bluff City. I think Bluff City VR should be a bit more prepared than XS was for this coordinated Spectrum squad. I'm curious to see how they're going to counteract their teamwork synergy. It is going to be pretty tough. So I do expect a pretty good back and forth here. We're going to check in with both squads to make sure that they are ready, and then we will start the match. So give me one quick. Teams are prepped. They have been notified. We are going to dive in to another round of Goal Tower. Familiarizing yourself with the concept of this game, each team is trying to capture the opponent's goal tower. You can see them with a big pillar of light shining up from the backside, and the idea is to move forward. You have to capture these points that you're seeing us, uh, that you're seeing in front of you now, and then you you teleport to those points. So it's a lot about the game itself is a lot about map control, has a, uh, a lot of focus on. Uh, as you can see right now, the start of the round, it's all about map control. So the Bluff City, in comparison to Ice, they're doing a much better job at pushing forward against the Spectrum VR, and they're finding these early picks already. So some shots coming in up on the north side. Fishman able to grab himself with one. Dragonborn VR on the backside trying to flank, and it get, gets denied by Fishman. Fishman this time actually having to defend this central area instead of sort of uh, popping back and forth. Kensai is going to try and assist center and pushing up but the, the difference here with bluff city is they are finding kills that i think uh excess were having trouble doing so now spectrum a little bit on their back foot look at your bottom uh the bottom corner of the mini map there you can see the map control certainly favoring that of the uh, uh bluff city squad brando trying to push forward goes down and a little bit of this is a nice back and forth we're seeing here both squads trying to gain some map control uh, and that's what this battle, that's what this early battle is going to be really all about. Who gets that map control? And then from there, how do you push? How do you coordinate with your team? How do you utilize the kills that you're securing here to your advantage? A lot of strategy, a lot of thinking has to come in here. You can actually see now Fishman, it looks like he's trying to secure himself with a little land on that south side. He gets scooped up by Dragonborn, a good pick from him. On the north, Brando finds himself a kill. He's going to try and grab this little land. And you notice that one thing that's different between uh, with Bluff City is that they do not make it as easy for this Spectrum team to push up. But already a cap coming in from Brandominos. He's tucked in. He's trying to secure it. And he may be able to get fire. Spectrum VR on the board. No, he can't. They tried to follow it up with their twos and threes. Fishman and Kensai trying to advance forward, but not able to do so. Interesting to see of this battle for, for uh, control of this left point here. It does look like Kensai's finally going to be able to grab it. Brandomino's occupying it quickly, but he's picked off. And Fishman somehow navigated around, tucking in behind his pillar, trying to grab a point. Can't quite get it. Now we're really into a bit more of a back and forth between these teams. Kensai up on the north side, I believe, trying to apply some pressure onto this ice squad. It's certainly getting applied. Spectrum doing a nice job of pushing in here. Nice enough, though. I mean, look at the map control right now. It is so in favor of Spectrum. And ice did not do a really great job of bouncing back with those kills and picking up a ton of land. It was pretty quickly scooped up here. You can see Brandominos Denying that central defense, and now he's capping the point. Nobody here to attack. Everybody's dead on their respawn timer. Some long-range shots coming in. Don't secure the kill. Spectrum on the board, 1-0. Go to our overhead and watch the early land grabs come in. Ice opting for that north push. Shots ringing out over onto that north side. Vegeta's War dealing with the enemy of Spectrum, but he does take a little bit of damage. Kensai finding himself a pick over on the backside. Fishman having a battle with Vegeta's War. And a push from Brando right up the center. Oh, who is this? 
That was Brando. Position was so strange, it didn't look like he was that far forward. They're just getting picks left and right here. Everybody's vying for the land grabs. We're seeing a real mismatch of land here. Ice is starting to shift things into their favor. Bluff City managing to get some good map control, and that's going to put Spectrum on the defense. On board Dragonborn as he does push up, and he's trying to secure a cap. Takes a ton of damage from Kensai, and Kensai's trying to find the angle, but he can't. He's going to try and shift around. Doesn't have the points to move to in time, and Dragonborn is here, tucked in, and he goes down. No assist from his team there. He really needed Goku and Vegeta's to apply the additional pressure on the enemy. Ooh, Vegeta's war gets denied. Dragonborn not able to support Goku's war. For some reason, shooting at his team does get picked up on the backside, and then that's also denied. But an interesting bit of team fire there. No, no damage comes out from that, but wasted time there. Maybe he was trying to tell his squad to go forward. Honestly, this, if this keeps up, this is going to play into the Spectrum hand, right? They're going to be able to eventually find themselves with the picks they need. Or they just keep sitting here and defending. They're up 1-0. They don't need to get points. It's just harder to sit and defend at your base. You really do have to maintain a decent amount of land control. We'll battle over here on the north side. Ooh, and a cap! Again, they have been consistently sneaking here, trying to punch in these codes. Goku's War also trying to get on the board, but can't quite find it. And man, that early point looking super valuable now for Spectrum. Point's coming in. He is aware of it. The shots bringing in from Brandominos onto Vegeta's War's flank here as he's trying to also defend the center. The pressure getting applied by Spectrum right now. Or no, excuse me, the pressure applied by Ice. Spectrum's sitting at their base defending them. It's interesting to see them try and compete for the land and then not take it, because if you don't teleport to that point, it can be so easily recaptured by the enemy and, oh, yikes. Good teamwork there from the Spectrum squad. They're trying to stack up on this north side. The team play is coming in, but they can't get the land they need. And now here's Dragonborn to defend. In the meantime, Goku's War is on the backside, capping for Spectrum. They have to refocus. They have to shift back here and get it. But Goku does not stay alive. 30 seconds left for this Ice Squad to mount another offensive. Oh, look at this, the double cap. Eight seconds left, can they secure it in time? Six, one goes down. Who is still there? Vegeta's War is trying to get it and he does not. Spectrum, just by the skin of their teeth, hang on to this win and take round number one, one to zero. Wow, that was close. Kensai, 27 and nine. What an animal. Wow. Talk about a good round one.
All right, y'all. You are both readied up. All right. Uh, give us 20 sec. Give me 20 seconds and I'll start it. Both squads readied up, prepared for the action. We are going to hop into round number two shortly here. I don't know what to anticipate out of this next matchup, but Bluff City got to answer early because that early lead certainly helps Spectrum quite a bit. We'll find out just exactly how they're going to do that as we hop into round number two. If you aren't aware, again, the objective of this game mode is to capture the enemy's goal tower. Those are highlighted by big illuminating pillars. The way you move around on this game is by going to these different nodes. You capture them a bit like uh, Splatoon, in that you can only really move where you're, uh, where you have control, where you have your color down. So uh, if you don't have a blue pillar secured, you can't teleport to that. So it does take some time to capture an enemy's pillar, and that's where the real back and forth that we're seeing here comes in. This man trying to get Vegeta's war so that he can deny the secure of this north side, but look at how fast. Vegeta's War is pushing up on the enemy here. They have to come back and defend, and Fishman does realize this. Vegeta's War is tucked in behind his pillar. Shots ringing in on the on just the, the hand. Meanwhile, a cap coming in. Who is this punching it in? It looks like Brand Domino's trying to secure himself an early Spectrum lead, and he does. He sneaks under the nose of this of this Bluff City squad. Spectrum looking looking much better here. Bluff City just doesn't have that early advantage that they did throughout most of last round, and it's definitely put them on a bit of a back foot. Fishman able to find himself a pick, and now he's instantly trying to grab the cap. Well, actually, that's looks like Vegeta's War on the backside going for a base race, and Spectrum able to secure that point before Bluff City can. And I, if I had to guess, I think it's the teamwork that's coming in here from Spectrum. If you put two people onto a tower or three, it captures it faster. If there's just one of you on the backside trying to capture it, it's not as quick. And so when you come to a base race time, just getting that one extra hand on there for a, for a second or two is enough to put you in the advantage. And that is what Spectrum have been doing well in this series. They've been coordinating their, their tower pushes. Very nice. And another cap attempt, and here comes the double cap. Quick and er quick and quick <laughs> spectrum. I say quick and early, but that was a bit of a longer uh, round uh, third third point there. Either way, spectrum looking very good, quick and quick. <laughs> That's how spectrum are looking. They're looking quick and quick right now, and it's throwing Bluff City off because they can't get the map control they normally want. They can't afford to invest as many as they want onto the flanks. What they need to do is find these kills like they just did, but there's another trade into the hands of Goku's War. And here's a cap from Vegeta's. They've been putting good attempts, at least, onto, this, onto the backside of Spectrum, but Spectrum's aware of their base race potential. Brandominos ducks in, but gets picked off. Ensai, not as successful yet in this game. Doesn't have his 27 kills. And again, on the flank, it looks like Ice may be getting on the board here. The point's getting punched in. Also on the side of Spectrum, but Bluff City able to actually get one in before Spectrum could there. We came down to another base race, the double honk coming out. But ultimately, Bluff City comes out ahead. And now we're into a, now we got ourselves a bit of a back and forth. Ooh, a nice pickup in the center. Could lead to a lot of land grab for this Bluff City squad. Look at how quickly he's moving up onto the north, and this is not ideal for Spectrum. He's already trying to secure the node, but can't quite get it. Ooh, that's interesting. He didn't secure this point up here. A huge open avenue for the team of Bluff City. Good that they identified Kensai trying to sneak in. Now they have an opportunity. to note that retreating doesn't necessarily uh, 
allow you time. You don't regenerate HP. So once you've taken damage, that health does not come back the longer you're alive. It is always down. So. Ooh, this is interesting. This is another cap attempt from Spectrum going completely unnoticed. It is the double push again. The success for Spectrum and Bluff City not as sharp as they were on round one. This is looking like Spectrum taking this series if they grab map number two. And we are in a best of three. This is a good push. They're trying to send an invest two onto the point, but Goku's in a nice spot. Has enough cover, but was so low on HP from previous battles. All it took was one shot in the meanwhile. A push coming in from Spectrum grabs them another point. Looks like it was a flank around to the north side that secured them that number five on the board. Ooh, that south flank for Brando's paying off again. Shots from Vegeta's are trying to land, and he somehow stayed alive, but does get picked off, thankfully, from that defensive side, it looked like. Fishman here being a threat. I mean, that is a lot of time where the rest of his team can secure land. Let's take a look at our overhead. Uh, at the minimap, excuse me. And yeah, you can see the land control definitely in favor of Spectrum, and it leads to these consistent cap attempts that keep coming in. Here's another double push. Might even be a triple. It is Spectrum with the full port press. Continue to pile on to this must-win round for Bluff City, and they have to get five unanswered points in a minute and a half. That's going to require a little bit of desperation on, this, on these pushes, and might not be exactly what they need, but they're here. Goku's trying to get himself an early point number two. He's positioned nicely. He's got pillar defense from the angles. He loses, he loses it on the objective. He had his hand there, but he got too deep into the pillar when he was defending from the shots. And he cannot get number two on the board for Bluff City. Wow, Brand Dominos getting low to the ground there. I, I think he's going prone when he goes for those caps. I really think he's laying down in his play space, making him super hard to hit, especially with the uh, bit of shield walls that are surrounding the objective. And This is all but over for Bluff City. Spectrum looking so good today on both sets. Their coordination so on point, really applying good pressure consistently onto the objective, finding the picks they need. And now Brandomino's their capper trying to grab himself point number eight. Quality series though, Bluff City certainly applying the pressure onto Spectrum. Uh, that I wasn't really, I mean, I was hoping for, but then Spectrum just stepping it up after feeling the heat from that last round. Clearly a team that can bounce back, although they did win the first one as well. 13, 16, I mean, just big KD lines there for Spectrum, and that's what really pushed them up ahead there. That is that series. Spectrum did a nice job. 
of grabbing that round two and what a what a great semis for Spectrum for them to come out here and win these two rounds in such dominating fashion. They are definitely a team to beat for these finals. That was fun. That was a great back and forth. I, that was one of the better tower tag matches I've had the pleasure of, uh, or sets I had the pleasure of casting. That was fun. I enjoyed that. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I think that's going to be a wrap for us on the day. We will be obviously covering the finals here on VRML once we get that uh, figured out and scheduled. Bring the action there. We may also take a look at a late game. I'm not 100% sure. It'll be hours from now if it does happen. But, um, there is one more match that's for the day. Outer Limits versus VR play. We will notify you via Twitter. Head on over to VRMasterLeague.com. You will find all of our Twitch, Twitter, and Facebook links. We have several leagues available. It's more focused on the online uh, online leagues, but we do have actually a couple arcades that compete in Onward VRML. So you have a lot of guys that like playing at your arcade. No, that we there's a there are teams, in a couple of these leagues. So. Echo Arena has been recently added. We have Space Junkies, Contractors, Final Assault, uh, and Pavlov. Well, but uh, over there, follow the Twitter accounts. Get involved if you do. Our esports. Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. My name is Nightfire with two E's. That will be it. The Tower Tag Tournament on Monday night. You all have a good night. Bye-bye.